Now we come to the pattern deviation. The printout of this area is known as the pattern deviation. To understand this, we need to explain some example. Suppose we get an examination of a group of students and their numbers, the number they get in this exam were quite high. And we start having this group arrange their number from the highest to the lowest number. And you get a range of numbers, say, from 95 degrees percent down to, say, 84 okay. percent. Then after two weeks, we get another group of students, and we give them some exam. And we see that our second exam was quite difficult. And the numbers the get out of this exam was quite low. Say the best number was 20% and getting low, low down to 2%. So we say, OK, we have a problem. It is our mistake that we make this exam very difficult. And we want to improve the results. So we decided we have to have some system that if we get this situation in the next exams, we can apply the same system. What is the system we ag agreed upon? We agreed upon to arrange the numbers of the first group from the highest to the lowest and go to the location 85%. Imagine that we get a row of 100 students. The tallest students is location number one. The shortest student is at the last. This is location number 100. So we get in the middle a student standing in location 50. A taller one is in location 70. A shorter one in, in location 30, and so on. So we do this with the numbers. We get the number of the students, arrange them from the highest to the lowest. And then the new group, the one with the low numbers that we want to improve the results, we arrange the numbers from the highs to the lows, and we choose to go to the location 85%. And see the difference. In this example, the difference between the best number, the location 85 in the good group, and the one in section B in the bad group, it's about, say, um, 20, 75%. This difference, we're going to add it to the bad group. We are going to raise the result of the bad group by 75%. This is an assumption that we agree, and we are going to apply this for all the exams, because we say that we get the second exam quite difficult. Okay? This is exactly what is going to be done in the field of vision. So. We get here the actual numerical values that the patient have. These are the sensitivity of the different locations, the, the 54 locations we tested. Arrange it from the highest sensitivity, which here is 22, to the lowest sensitivity, which is 14. This, these are the numbers we've seen. But in the memory, we get the normal range of the same age. The computer will arrange them from the highest to the lowest, then check the location 85%, and see the difference. The difference was found to be 3 decibel. Then the program will add plus 3 to all these numbers. So the 22 will be 25. The last one, 14, will be 17, and that's it. So it's, it's an adjusted values. We, we erase the values. Now, after raising these values, the computer will start to compare the new values, the adjusted values, with the normal. And the difference will be plotted here again in numbers. So in this area, the one we call total deviation to just direct comparison between the numbers we get here, the sensitivities of the different locations, and the normal. But in this area, we change these numbers by getting a, a little bit up or more up or even down. And the new numbers are 
again compared with the normal. And if there is any difference, it will be written here. Then the probability plot of these points being abnormal will be drawn. So in pattern deviation, the difference between the adjusted threshold, the threshold that can be adjusted up or down, depending on the difference in the position, 85%, compared with the normal is recorded. And the probability plot of this is given. Now I'm going to show you two examples to make things more clearer to you. The first one is a case of an advanced glaucoma with clear media. Why we do this in the first place? In the exam, we assume that we get the examination. In the second time, we get so many difficult questions, and we assume that these difficult questions couldn't be answered by none of the students. So we want to get the numbers high. We want to eliminate the effect of these difficult questions. In the field of vision, this is done on assumption that there was some media opacity. A patient with a cataract, a patient with corneal opacity, with vitreous hemorrhage. This media opacity will lower the sensitivity of the whole points of the retina. And we want to get rid of this effect. So we assume that in the exam with the students, we get very difficult questions to be answered. And similarly, in the eye, we get a media opacity that lowers the sensitivity. Okay. But still, you can have this different situation. I want to show you this field. This is a patient, a young girl, 17 years old. We, we get, she gets a clear media. Everything is perfect. And as you see, this is the picture of her fundus, advanced glucometer cupping. And this is the numerical value. You get most of the points get a sensitivity of zero. Maybe you get some points here in the center with sensitivity 22, 23, but the remaining is zero. So as you can see here, when these numbers, zeros compared with the normal of her age, you get all the points in black. This is quite low. But on adjusting things, most of the black points disappeared. Only these few points remained because of that. I'll show you it in a minute. This is the normal recorded values of her age. And say, for example, our patient, the location 85% was 10. So program will do as follows. You get a difference 15 between the location 85 of this patient and the normal of her age is 15 decibel. Then the program will rise these values by 15. So this 12 will come to. 27, so it will appear as normal. So don't have it for granted to say if you get total deviation here means core media opacity, and if you have here no changes, it means there is no local effect. It's not always like that. This is what we do in most of the cases. If you have the total deviation affected, you say this is due to media opacity, corneal opacity, lens opacity. If the same dots disappear from the pattern deviation, you are sure it's just the total opacity of the media. If the remaining some points stayed here in the total deviation, you say this is the, an actual local defect. This is, in most of the cases, right. But it can be wrong, as in this example. This patient has no media opacity at all. Because in our assumption that the second exam was so many difficult questions to be answered, actually the second group was bad students. They don't study anything. That's why they get bad numbers. If we apply the same rules, we'll improve the result. The same is with that girl. That girl get advanced glaucoma and sensitivity of the retina is low all over. So the program will do the same thing, get numbers, adjust, and improve things. Then you get market improvement of the results in the pattern deviation. Then I get another example, the reverse.
This is the field of a happy trigger patient. This is the field of vision of a young child. His age was 11. This is his first time to do the field. And he was very happy answering the, he sees, he sees. And you can see the numbers of the sensitivity here. It's quite super. Areas are sensitive by 40, 45. He's much, much better than the normal. On comparing with the total deviation here, you get most of the numbers higher than the normal by 10 and so on. Then, on adjusting things, you get this. Location 85% say it's 555, while the normal is 25. So the difference is 30. So all these values should be decreased by 30. Then you get these black dots. If you look here, it looks as if there is nothing in the media and there is market affection locally. But actually, this is not the case. You get here a high false positive, And you get this whitish appearance of the happy trigger patient. So keep in mind, as a rule, we say this part will tell us about total deviation, means media opacity, and this part about local deviation, the pattern deviation. But sometimes you get things not going the way it should be. So keep in mind, on interpreting the field, you have to compare what you see in the field with, with the data of the patient. You need to check the actual the patient, the media, things, and the back part of the eye.